Today I'm showing you how to make a very simple dress, no pattern needed. I'm Maddie with Maddie Sews, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple but really beautiful sundress like this. Now this type of dress is perfect to donate to charities and events like Project Dress a Girl because the dress pulls right over the head, it has adjustable straps right here, and you can include optional pockets. A pocket tutorial is coming soon. If you want to join in and donate a dress like this, you can click on the link above and that's going to take you to the announcement video. You can also find it in the description box below. Well, I guess with all that being said, let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need to make this dress. For your supplies, we're going to try to keep this really simple. You're going to need elastic. I'm using this half inch non-roll elastic. You're going to need a seam gauge, pins, a safety pin, and a machine needle. I'm using this Universal 8012. And you're also going to need a seam ripper. We hope that we don't have to use it, but let's be realistic and assume that we might have to. You're also going to need bias tape. You can either get store-bought bias tape like this one, which is extra wide double fold. It's a half inch wide or you can consider making your own like I did here. And I'll be bringing you a bias tape tutorial tomorrow. You're gonna need your fabric. This is 100% cotton and thread, of course. And a label. If you need one, shoot me a quick email to hello at Marisos and I'll be happy to mail you one or two. One last thing to note is that you're going to need the chart with all of the measurements for your fabric, elastic, bias tape, and it tells you which armhole template to use. And then you're also going to need to print out your template for your armhole. You can find links to these in the description box. So I guess let's just get to making our dress. Go ahead and grab your fabric. Mine is 22 inches by 44. And you're going to want to fold it in half so that way the right sides are together. Now I'm just going to leave these selvage edges on and I'm going to line up my fabric so that it meets up nicely at that selvage edge. If you have raw edges, make sure you finish them. Go ahead and grab your pins, and then we're just gonna put a couple of pins in here to keep it all in place. You know, make sure it doesn't do any shifting around. Now sew from one end to the other. Don't forget to backstitch. Now you can see I've pressed open my seam right down the back. Now what we need to do is we need to arrange that back seam so that it's right in the middle of our garment. And I'm going to flip it and put it towards the back because we're going to have to fold this. Okay, so now that that's done, we are going to grab one end and make it meet up with the other side. Make sure that those folds are right together and that your back seam is on the edge because now we're going to cut our armholes. And you can see there's two different edges here. Grab your armhole template and put it right up against that edge. So now we have the two folds, remember? Pin this in place so that way it doesn't go slipping and sliding. You don't want any surprises when you're cutting some armholes. <laughs> And we're just gonna go ahead and cut this, this baby out. Okay, so now we're done with the armhole so we can put our template back and toss out the little extra fabric here. And when you open up your garment, you can see that there's these two little armholes on the side. Um, we have our front neckline, which is folded over right here, and then we also have the back neckline. Now we're going to make casings for our elastic. So fold over the edge on your front by a quarter inch and pin that in place. We're going to fold it a quarter inch all the way across the top edge because our next step is actually going to be to press this down and then we're going to fold it over again to create the casing. So now that we've got our quarter inch done, let's go ahead and press that. 
Okay, now we're back. I've pressed the edge on the front here. And so now we're going to measure three quarters of an inch. Now I'm going with three quarters of an inch because my elastic is half an inch. So I want that extra quarter inch to give myself a little bit of space to be able to slide that elastic into the casing. If you make it too small, it's not gonna work. If you're using three quarters inch elastic, I recommend you make a one inch wide casing. If you're using quarter inch elastic, I recommend you do a half inch casing. Now that we're done, go and get it pressed. Okay, so you can see I've pressed my edges. I've actually done both the front and the back here. And we are now going to have to stitch across the very bottom of that casing to close it up. Don't forget to do both the front and the back. Okay, so now that we've got our stitches in place, go ahead and grab your safety pin. I've got this big old mamma jamma here and I'm gonna get my elastic. Again, it's half inch elastic. And I'm going to just basically put that safety pin through one end of this elastic because we're going to put it in this casing. So insert it into one side. and slide it on through. Now, as you're sliding this into the casing, you wanna make sure that you stop where the actual end meets the edge of your fabric. And that's where mine is right now, so I'm gonna put a pin in here so that way I don't lose my elastic. Now that the pin's in there, we're gonna sew across that elastic to secure it. Okay, our elastic is secured. Now we can finish moving the rest of it through the casing and get our safety pin back. That safety pin is precious. And there, it's free. Ta-da! <laughs> so now we're going to pin this so that way we don't lose our elastic. And then we're gonna take our safety pin back from our dress and we're going to sew this elastic down the same way we did the other side. So just sew across that edge there. We're back and now you can see my elastic is hanging out a bit. I'm just gonna even that up with the edge of my fabric. Easy peasy. And we're going to repeat for the other side. Okay, now that I see my safety pin, I am going to reclaim this sucker because he is mine. So I'll replace it with the pin and I'm gonna go and sew now. And like magic, we now have our elasticated front and back necklines. Now you're going to pick up your dress and put it down so that way the armholes are facing you. Grab your bias tape. Now it's time to apply it. You're gonna have to find the middle point of the bias tape. So that's what I'm doing right now. And when I find it, I'm just gonna open up that little part and I'm gonna put it right down on the middle of that armhole. Just one of the armholes. Now don't do both, cause that would be funny. Pin it in place. And then you're gonna wanna do it all the way across the armhole. Now, when you get up here by the elastic, try to move some of the gathers out of the way so that way it's not as bulky. Some machines have an issue getting over all this bulk. So make sure you catch both sides and then do it on the other side as well. And now that we've got the last pin in place, we're actually going to have to move down to the end of the bias strips and we're going to have to tuck them under. So let me show you how to do that. First, you're gonna to wanna to open up that bias tape, fold over the edge, and then fold it back closed. I don't wanna hear no mess about my nails. 
Now that the straps are pinned at the edges, we're going to sew across the edge here, and then we're gonna sew down around the armhole and then back across. Don't forget to back stitch where the fabric meets the bias tape. And now this is what it looks like. So we're gonna do it to the other side and repeat the process. Meet me back here when you're done. Okay, and so there we have it. Both the straps are on our cute little dress. It's really looking like something, huh? I did back stitch where the fabric meets the bias tape. So now I'm gonna tie some cute little bows cause you know this thing needs some bows. <laughs> and we're gonna admire our work here. We're not done though. <laughs> now it's time to actually hem this thing. So fold it over a quarter inch and then you can do an additional two inches. It's up to you. You don't have to go the entire two inches. You can do a one inch hem, a two inch hem, whatever you'd like. Hem your dress. There, I am all pressed. Now I'm going to sew across this edge. And voila, time to put on my label and I'm gonna sew it on right above that actual hemmed edge. So I'm gonna pin it, and you'll see me back here in a second. And like magic, dress is done. And look how cute this little thing came together. You are, uh, this dress makes my heart sing. And there you have it, your dress is now complete. Now don't forget to take a picture and post it on Instagram using hashtag Project Dress -a Girl and tag me at Madi Sews for Curves so that way I can make sure that I include your dress in the tally as well as in the compilation video at the end of the event. Also, keep in mind that all September long, I'm going to be bringing you additional patterns that you could use, tips and tricks, hacks, and I'll also be highlighting all of the really fun YouTubers who are joining in on Project Dress a Girl. Elisa from Thoughtful Creativity is going to show you how to make a really adorable A-line dress for a little girl on Sunday. And you can catch that video right over here. And trust me, you're really not gonna wanna miss that video. And until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.